So, Regina, our next speaker, would you believe, is the, the chair of London Eastern and Region Unite, Jim Kelly. And uh, he's here to my right. So, he's going to have a few words. He's also a taxi driver, gang. Now, don't, don't gang up on him here. <laughs> because taxi drivers are our friends. <laughs> A bit, wor bit worried about that response there, comrades. <laughs> okay, I'm only going to say a few words because I think the two previous speakers uh, basically said a lot uh, I wanted to say. But uh, can I just thank again the authors, as Steve did, of this document? Not not just uh, our colleagues uh, in the GLA, but people like Joanne and Paul and Mo who've got this together, organised this today, got you guys together and put this on the political agenda in London which is where it should have always been and it's disappointing that we've got a London Mayor who seems to forget about the people who elected him in 2015. This union gave a lot of support to Sadiq Khan and I'm not supposed to say that apparently he's the son of a bus driver, I'm, I'm not supposed to say that, but he should remember that he's up there to represent and support working people in London. And when he makes speeches about London being the most business friendly city in the world, he wants to make sure that the businesses that come here respect their workers that they agree to collective bargaining, that they agree to recognise trade unions. And when I looked at your Bill of Rights, I was, I was quite shocked, but some of the issues there apply to taxi drivers as well, and, poss and probably all transport workers as well. And the main one is toilet facilities. I mean, this has been a, uh, an issue for taxi drivers for a long, long time. I think that in today's day and age that you have to rely on the goodwill of a pub owner or a cafe owner to allow you to go in there and go to the toilet is outrageous. And especially for uh, you guys on buses where you've got fixed routes and you've got to go at certain times. The idea that companies that make billions of pounds out of CFL contracts and then repatriate that money abroad often aren't prepared to put anything into the type of infrastructure that our members need is really, really wrong in 2017. I've noticed another couple of things here that I was a bit shocked about and I didn't know about. You're communicating by text, you're communicating all the time by controllers with all the technology now that's been developed. CFL ran a campaign, actually it was on the back of buses. It was in uh, July and it said, when driving, glancing at your phone ju just once is one risk too many. They ran that campaign, that's CFL advice. And yet they're asking our members to continually be distracted from driving with communications from your uh, controllers. That's wrong. You've got together. You've won in 2012. Steve made this point. 2012 you won the Olympic bonus. The mayor then, the Tory mayor, didn't want it to give it to us. He was willing to give it to all other sections of the... Uh, of the passenger industry in London, but he didn't want to give it to buses. You went out on strike and you won that in 2012. As Steve said, you, you won in 2014 as well, when you went out in 2014 for one rate of pay. And Sadiq Khan should remember that if we have to do it again, I'm quite sure that this region will back its passenger section if we had to go out, show our muscle and go out and strike again to win the demands in the Charter. Thank you, colleagues. Thanks, Jim. Uh, and I never meant any of that, by the way, because Jim's a great uh, comrade and uh, the taxi drivers, believe it or not, uh, support us 100%. And we should be supporting them. <laughs>